Welcome to Unbreakable Latina. Hi everyone, welcome back to Unbreakable Latina. Today I have a very, very special guest, my little sister, Roxy. What's poppin'? On today's episode, we're going to discuss about how Roxy figured out what her passion is and how she got to the job that she has today. So Roxy, tell us a little bit about how you discovered your passion. Was it something that you grew up knowing you wanted to do? Did you discover that in high school or was it in college? So going straight off my senior scrapbook that I did in 2015, I actually had it written out, and I'll even read it out loud right now. In 10 years, you should expect me to have a college degree that helped me find the career of my dreams. I would probably be working with some type of entertainment company where I wear, where I will handle marketing and advertising. It goes on to other stuff, but I didn't realize that I had known what I wanted to do since senior year of high school until about last year that I came upon my senior scrapbook again but that's when I knew what made you realize like did you see somebody or did you hear about a cool job did you read some job descriptions I think it just started with what I was involved in I was always a part of something with leadership so in high school, I was a part of AVID that helped me get into college, so I was always very goal-oriented. And then I always had really good mentors. It started with my dance instructor, Miss Robinson at A.B. Miller. Shout out to Miss Robinson. <laughs> um, and then from there, I went to college immediately after I went to UCR, and my initial plan was actually to major in business and minor in media and cultural studies but I'm not a real good girl at math. <laughs> so yeah. I ended up reversing that. I minored in media and culture studies and I minored. Wait, wait no, you I majored, majored in, in media and culture <laughs> studies and I minored in business admin. But throughout that, I had joined a sorority, was still doing leadership, ended up being chapter president. But before I got to that, I would handle like social media for the sorority and I think I was just always interested. I grew up basically when social media was really now. I remember being on Instagram when I was in high school. Yeah, having, Snapchat. A, having a Facebook when you shouldn't have one. <laughs> Under a different name so I wouldn't get caught up. <laughs> Did you apply to multiple schools or what made you choose UCR? I think I already knew I was going to go to college. Like That wasn't an exception for me just because I had the role models of you and also our brother Willie. William because he doesn't I, like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I remember being the same way like I had like there was no choice like you knew you were going to high school and you're going to college after and I feel like because our parents didn't get to go to college that was instilled in us since day one I remember my mom would always be like oh tienes que ir al colegio and I like I, that's all I knew I had no other option but unlike Roxy, I don't know what I wanted to do. Do you feel like you manifested this? Because I don't believe in that. But after hearing this story and like, I feel like you manifested this. Yeah, I actually do think I manifested. And I didn't realize that until recently because everything related to manifestation or affirmations I've recently been learning about. So now everything is like the missing puzzles coming together. And I know I still have more to go, but... I'm working on that. I think in January 2019, I was like, all right, I have to buckle up. You know, everything we're taught in the education system is to go to college and get a good job, nine to five, that's your career. So I was hustling, applying everywhere. And at that time, I already wanted to be in Orange County, um, still doing marketing stuff, but I didn't have the experience that jobs like that needed. So isn't that so unfortunate? Did you do internships while you were... You did do internships. Who yeah. did you intern for? Um, I was luckily able to connect with one of the advisors for my sorority who had her own marketing firm, but she did it specifically for businesses that did IT stuff. But that was mainly like where my graphic design skills started. 
um, and even just like proposals, business proposals for presenting what deliverables you were going to do for the client. So you graduated and you said that you started looking and applying for jobs. How did your job search go? I think I had a spreadsheet of probably maybe close to 300 or 400 jobs that I had applied to and maybe heard back from like 10. So it was super discouraging. I remember like she was so desperate and I told her like it's gonna come with time. How did you land the job that you had? Well, I was talking to you and Willie because I didn't know what to do next. I really wasn't getting anywhere and it was super discouraging, but... Because well, you th- didn't have experience. Yeah. And that's the thing. I don't get how we're supposed to get experience in what we want to do if you don't get your foot in the door without any experience. Yeah, especially for us that we were going to school full time. I was still like in extracurriculars. I remember you were in some too. And we still had to work and commute because I wasn't living on college. Oh, yeah. So that took up a lot of my day too. So you you landed one job, I do remember. So I went to a staffing agency. It was a temp to hire. So I interviewed with them and I got hired on the spot. So, Um, but yeah, I started with them. I was there. It was a, a... to give details, it was a CPA firm, so it was accounting, and I already told you guys I suck at math, so <laughs> I got hired, like, admin, so I was at the front desk helping, just everything, anything clerical. How did your first few weeks go there? Did you feel like, wow, I finally landed a cool job? No, I already knew I wasn't gonna like it there. So the moment you walked in, you knew you weren't gonna like it, or was it, like, within your first day, like? The first day, for sure. I like my coworkers were great and even like you're still friends with them right yeah and even some of the higher management it's just you know as an adult because I'm yeah I'm a young adult but you already know what kind of people you vibe with and which ones you don't and so you 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 start like going to this job and you don't like it already your first day what made you not like it besides the fact that you weren't doing what you wanted to do people just getting like put on the back burner for the smallest things i mean we look at the smallest things but then i like now i think back and like okay business owner has to like that's their whole business that they're running but there's just way to, ways to talk to people and i don't know if it's like a Culture? hispanic cultural type of thing but i would not be talking to like that like i i put up a wall for so long and i had seen other people get broken down like to the point where they'd leave in tears during lunch and I'm like, they're not going to do that to me. <laughs> I'm too hard-ass for that. And yeah. Roxana is like that, guys. She's, like, super tough. And, like, it takes a lot to make her cry in front of you. Do you remember the moment that you broke down at that job? Yeah. Um, I think I was already a year, in, maybe a year and a half into it. I had already gone through a tax season. And keep in mind, this was my first 9 to 5 and it was when the pandemic hit. The money was great. Yeah, it was <laughs> I was <really>. balling. <laughs> and I got to take care of, like, saving up money, Probably. saving up for my car, stuff that I wanted to get taken care of. But looking back, like, uh, now I don't care about money. I'd rather put my mental health and my happiness first. Um, because I would even come home to you guys in a bad mood. I, like, it would really affect... Me at home, too. Oh, yeah. It affected our relationship a lot. Like, I remember you would just snap, like, over the smallest things. But I understood what she was going through because I, myself, had worked in a lot, like, had some horrible jobs. And that's not the job. It's just the environment. It's so toxic. And when you have a toxic workplace, it just... And stuff going on at home. Oh, it's a double whammy. Mm -hmm. Like, like life's already hard in general. Your job doesn't need to make your life even worse. And I think that with our generation, that's changing because we care more. Like, mental health is important now. Before, like, I think our parents back then would be saying, like... Like, brushing it under the rug. Yeah, or be like, oh, pues así es el trabajo. Like, that's how work is. And Mm -hmm. work, work is work. Like, you have to bring home the bacon. But now, things are changing. The time where everything went bad. It sounds like a chapter. It, it was a dark morning. <laughs> no, so the day I broke down, it all happened because I, at that time, I already got 
I guess, promoted or I got a different role to where I was executive assistant to one of the partners. And that partner had a meeting early on in the day, which was maybe like 7.30 as opposed to being there like at 9. I don't even remember when I would clock in. So because I wasn't there and I didn't print out some papers that she had access to, it caused like, like the end of the world in the office. And honestly, it's a blur, probably because I don't even want to remember that day. You blacked out. (laughs) Yeah, but they were just talking to me in the conference room, like, one-on-one. And I was just, like, staring at them, trying to figure out, like, is this really happening right now? Like, for a fucking piece of paper (laughs) that you could have (laughs) printed? So I think it just, like, escalated to me being, like, at my desk and not even being able to focus. And, like, you said, I'm not that type of person. So I was like, I need to get the fuck out of here. (laughs) And at that time, it was already pandemic. I was already unhappy prior to that. So I had thought, okay, everybody's online. Somebody needs help somewhere. Let me reach out, start applying to internships. I was, like, researching here and there. And one day, I made a connection on LinkedIn. And I checked it out because we had mutuals. So I was going through it. It was at that time one of the guys who was on the sales team. And I saw the company, which is insane. Clicked on it. What? They're in Fontana? They do marketing? So then I go on their website. I'm like, whoa, this is so cool. Like, they're really in Fontana. I've never even imagined me over here trying to leave to OC and it's right down the street. <laughs> I basically just reached out like, hey, I graduated. This is what I'm doing right now. I'm interested in any remote work internship paid or unpaid i want to do it email back the next day from them hey let's set up a call set up the call um get set up to another call that time i met the ceo the co-founder and then the president of the company and i started as an intern just doing graphics like account management so i was a liaison between i didn't even say that right liaison (laughs) <laughs> between their clients and our team did you know that you had the skills or were you kind of fake it till you make it i mean i had some experience but i was faking it till i was making it yeah, and i remember like youtubing stuff right like yeah YouTubing stuff all the skills that i have to this day not all of them are from them but i had a good foundation prior to them but i'd say like 75 percent of the skills that i have right now I've gained in just one year with being with them. And that's because they're people who are dedicated to creating growth for like not only our clients, but for the team. And that's something Wait, that- you're w- skipping a whole part. You're telling us you got an internship. You're already telling us the outcome. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. okay, so you reached out, you had this internship. So I was juggling it. I remember. It was like- I was already working long hours. I think I was working like 12, 13 hour days, right? Yes yeah you were you were grinding yeah. you were grinding your during my, well, pandemic your eight to five that was a freaking seven to, to twelve seven or something to eight or something <laughs> yeah um and then still wh- getting home and doing internship stuff what and they were scared about that about uh, me like not having the time to manage but i was so dedicated to proving that i could do it because i was so hungry to learning it. yeah um that i'd work i'd be sending emails at night but I was getting things done. So you start interning. You're working this terrible, horrible job that was super toxic. How did you go about deciding that that nine to five, which was supposed to be a nine to five, was not for you? Was it when you started interning here? Like, I mean, you already knew it wasn't for you, but what pushed you to say, like, this isn't for me? It was like the guidance that I had from the internship from everybody on the team. I had never even met anybody in person. Everything was online. But just with connecting with them, they got to know me. And that time that everything like went down at the office, I came home and I got a call for something regarding the internship, but I broke down. And for somebody that I've never met in person, (laughs) and for me to be the type to not break down like that and cry over a phone call, said a lot because even though they hadn't met me like it was easy with my boss now um that was a lot like he could feel the pain through me he's like oh hell no roxy like you're not gonna work there anymore (laughs) (laughs) and that was just the start of it i think three months more passed by and we got closer to what was going to be a new tech season and i had called them saying like hey thank you so much like for this internship 
because they wanted me to take on more roles since I was doing good with the team. But I was so stressed about that job. Like, I'm not going to be able to handle it. So Was your internship paid at the time? Mm-mm. So you were working for free mm-hmm. over, over, over time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so you told them, what did you tell them when the next tax season was coming? I remember I was, like, I was driving home late, like at 8 p.m. And I was just like, hey, can we hop on a call today? And I was talking to Lola and Izu saying, I don't think I'm going to be able to help you guys the same because we're about to go to tax season. I'm already working long hours now. I'm going to work even longer hours then. And I don't want to do you guys dirty and my work ethic not be the same. So then they were like, "Uh uh-uh, by the end of the year, we're going to make something work. We're going to make something work. So your your now boss, Izu, um, he told you he was going to get you out of this job. Did you believe him? I felt it. I just was kind of impatient. Like, when? When is it going to happen? I never said that to him, but I was just so anxious to get out of it that I wanted to know, like, when it was going to happen. Because I could not imagine... Because you're a control freak. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I need to know when. I need to add it to my calendar. Oh, God. (laughs) So, when you went back to work after having that conversation where you're like, F this job. I don't give a shit anymore. (laughs) I did have that attitude. Yeah, you were like, all right. I remember, like, you were kind of like, me vale madre. I was. Um... (laughs) And that day finally came sometime around Christmas. But even when that day came, I, I remember was... you were nervous and you ha- did you, you asked me, right? What yeah. do you think? I remember telling I you. I know what it was. What did I say? I don't know. Like, are you going to regret this later on? Or can you live with thinking like, what if later? Something along the lines of that. And when you told me that, I was like, hell no. I don't want to think like, why did I do this? So it was a huge decision. And I remember like, Telling you, and I like I wish I could give this advice to myself, <laughs> I <know laughs> but I now, but it. now I do. Now I do, especially after starting this podcast. Like I have been wanting to do it for a long time, and now I'm more like, okay, do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> but I remember telling you, I said, "Do you hate your job? Yes. Do you love your internship? Yes. Will you regret not taking this opportunity with your internship, even though you don't know if it's for sure because you've never met these people, but it sounds like they're good people. And I think I just said, "Do are you passionate about this? Yes. I was like, then do it, right? So tell us about the day you quit, because that's a fun story. <laughs> okay. It makes me feel a little bit bad for like half the people that I worked with, because they were good, genuine people, and I understood their pain and how taxing the job was. But it was like our holiday party Friday and then Sunday night, right before Monday, right before heading into a new tax season, email, hey, I'm resigning, no two weeks notice, Friday was my last day. And I had left with my gift, so that's like the part that makes me feel (laughs) shitty, but it was like, I couldn't be there any longer. I legit couldn't, like for what? I was already going to be upset. And I even felt like if I did go back and give them a two weeks, they'd probably send me home. So you quit your job, you start working full-time for this company that you've never met anybody. When did you meet everybody? Mm, it still was like months in. I don't even remember. Everything's, it's been recent, it's like within the last but year. I feel but... like since the pandemic hit, like I don't remember like what time. year what happened mm-hmm. and it feels longer. Mm-hmm. Like it feels like whatever happened last year was like a long time ago and so, so you, the day you met them, were they like what you expected or were you like, whoa, like this is totally not what I expected? It felt like it was people that I already knew for years. Yeah. That's how I knew like, okay, I'm in the right place. Our Monday meetings, our check-ins with how we're doing at home, like at that time, yesterday and work personally, whatever, they legit care about you. It's a family yeah. and it's a team that's dedicated, like create growth is plastered everywhere in our minds <laughs> so right now like what's your title for you now you work for rich is insane and what's your title <laughs> i'm executive assistant to izu the ceo but i also help with operations for the company so i work with lola the co-founder i basically they say I run the company sometimes. <laughs> so you're the you're you're your boss's um I'm right the, hand woman. Yeah, I am. I'm the power behind the throne is also <laughs> what I'm told. <laughs> 
So now that you're working for Riches and Saint, like, what's your favorite part about your job? I think my favorite part is that no day is the same. I mean, we have structure here and there, but I really do have a lot of freedom. Freedom that I haven't had in a long time because I was too busy working, going to school, commuting. Now I'm in OC where I wanted to be, even though I'm not with you guys. <laughs> it's like... It's, it's a short drive unless yeah. it's traffic like today. <laughs> it took me three hours. No, but that's my favorite part. I have no day that's the same. Um, and the people too, like being around them has changed me. And I'm sure you can tell too, like I'm way more motivated. I still have work to do. Like I'm not perfect, but they motivate me to be my best version of myself. And they're never going to stop me from growing, even if it's outside of the company. Inspiring. It's inspiring to see you be somewhere you like and not saying that my job is terrible. I do love my job, but it's not what I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because I'm finding myself like really feeling passionate about doing this podcast. And I never knew. Yeah. And it was like, you just have to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what advice would you give someone that is stuck in a rut and is stuck in a job they hate but knows what their passion is but is scared mm -hmm. what would you tell them my thing is two things everything happens for a reason and if not now when because life like tomorrow is not promised i know it's more about who you know and what your experience is and if you don't have that experience create it because i didn't have all the experience i have today the stuff I know today is because I learned <laughs> like on the job or on your own or on my own. So there's YouTube, there's <laughs> TikTok University, it, there's it's anything. It's true. It's true. I've learned so many things from online. Like I didn't know anything about a podcast. And how fast did you do it? Like within two days, you're like, all right, order my stuff. We did the branding together. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's October 11th was my first podcast. This is going to be like, I already done like, this is my fourth episode yeah this is my fourth mm -hmm. episode and what this taught me is like stop talking about it and do it because mm -hmm. no one's gonna do it for you but it really is about just putting yourself out there because if you don't put yourself out there what no one's gonna come and tell you hey melina here do a podcast hey roxy you know that marketing job you want? Like, here. It's here for you. Like, no yeah. one's going to hand you anything. You have to work hard. You have to, like, Make right now, happen. it's freaking 10 o'clock. I know I have to wake up. Okay, my alarm goes off at 5.30. I know that I have to wake up and go to my 8 to 5. And sometimes I'm at work and I'm like, oh, shoot. Like, I needed to do this. Or, oh, my God. But I'm going to learn how to organize myself better. <laughs> so that way I do this over the weekend. But, you know, you have a life, too. Mm -hmm. So how did you find that balance, though, like, of um, trying to keep your life together along with balancing that horrible job you had and the internship i think it was just motivation like my motivation to get out of that and get into was a place. higher yeah. than, than anything and that's the biggest thing like the reason why people don't do something is because they don't know their why like or their why is not that powerful to push them so sometimes people might be thinking about things too su superficially like Oh, I want another job because I want more money. Oh, I want to go live over here because I want people to see that I made it. Like, that stuff's not going to take you anywhere. As long as you're following your passion and what is going to make you happy, everything else is going to fall into place, even the money side. And I know that's so scary, especially, like, for first for, generation. Yeah. The money will come. I'd rather happiness over money. Okay, Roxy, so where can people find you for all your their marketing needs? <laughs> At double underscore Foxy with two Y's, Roxy with two Y's. Maybe just go on your Instagram and find a tag picture of me so it's easier. <laughs> I'll tag you to the podcast and I'll tag you on the Instagram as yeah. well. Cool. But email marketing, website, social media, logos, branding, whatever you name it. I'm your girl, your marketing guru. Yes, she did all my stuff, my branding for the podcast, and it looks great. Everybody compliments it. Thank you so much for coming to my podcast that you encouraged me to do. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye.